Hey gang, so I wanted to share with you how field work actually works. This is just my perspective, um, and I think probably the perspective of a lot of my friends and colleagues, as far as I can tell. So take that with a grain of salt, or maybe a bunch of grains of salt. Um, but field work is interesting because it's this, uh, there's this kind of crazy catch-22 trade-off thing that happens where you, you want to be very prepared when you go to the field to, to execute a, a specific kind of plan. But uh, as a field biologist and an ecologist in particular, studying something as dynamic and complex as a natural ecosystem, one as diverse as a coral reef, you don't wanna be too ingrained, I think, in a plan, because if you do that, you could miss opportunities to kind of go on tangents that could be incredibly fruitful and may enhance the original idea or, or actually just eclipse it and just be better than the original idea. Um, there's so much amazement that comes from observing natural ecosystems uh, when you do it at, at such an in high intensity, when you're in the field constantly and you're watching nature happening, um, that, that little things will come, a little, little like patterns will pop in and you're like, wow, I've never noticed that or thought about it, even though you may have spent years studying this, this, this ecosystem. So that's one of the trade-offs is this, this whole like, how much should I just do exactly what I had originally planned versus, oh, I should follow my, you know, interests as they kind of like manifest in the field. So that's one of the, one of the parts. Uh, but then the other part is there's this whole like you, you really want to include a, a lot of, of, of interesting aspects to your work, but you also need to replicate uh, a ton. So whatever you're doing, you need to do it a lot. Um, that could be experimental treatments, that could be uh, um, behavioral trials, that's a lot of the stuff that we're doing right now. You need a lot of replication to be able to understand something clear um, because nature is so variable. So there's this trade-off of how many factors are you interested in? In our case, we're interested in um, social context of fish, the, the landscape context, how much the, the shape of the immediate reef affects fish behavior, um, how much the, the focal species affects uh, individual decisions. So those are, those are all different kinds of factors and to really dig deeply into any of them, you need a ton of replicates. So what I'm getting at here is there is this whole layers of interesting stuff to ask versus sufficient replication to actually make some sense at the end of the day with your data. So that's another trade-off. Uh, that happens. And so you're, you're battling with that. And um, what's also kind of funny is, uh, and this is something I, my students that I bring to the field complain about all the time, understandably, is that it, it becomes, it can become very repetitive. Because um, again, you're trying to get a bunch of replicates, right? So you're often doing the same kinds of tasks over and over and over again. So you get, again, enough power to understand something. But what's funny about that is, as I'm describing, there's some dynamism here, so you're kind of figuring things out as you're going to some degree. Um, and so you often don't, if you're anything like me, you often don't lock down your methodology until you know later than you might originally have thought you would. And so then it's this situation where, okay, um, you figured out exactly how you're gonna do things and then you do them. And then what seems to often happen is you you do all these replications, you do these experimental treatments, you do these trials, um, you do these surveys, whatever it is you're doing, you do it a ton and it's new. So you start out not being good at it, like everything we do in life. We're not very good when we first start. Uh, but just like anything else in life, as you do it a ton, you get better and better and better at it. And so one of the funny like sort of catch 22s is by the time you feel like you are a master. I mean, you are like awesome at the methods and you are just on top of it. There's no, nothing's gonna hold you back. You figured out all, all of the, the, the hangups and all the, the ways that you can work around them. Once that happens, once you're awesome, it's usually time to leave. <laughs> it's usually time for the season to end. So Heather and I are dealing with that right now. We, we've pretty much locked in a method um, and now we're just like, all right, well now, now that we're really good, we gotta, we gotta you know, make it count. So anyway, I hope this, this helps you understand um, these kinds of vagaries about field work, but uh, this has certainly been true in my experience. And so other, other scientists out there, uh, especially early career folks, I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on sort of uh, if you agree with this and, or if you don't, um, but this is just kind of my take on sort of the moment to moment um, uh, trials and tribulations of data collection when you're at the, in these sort of finite field periods. 
Thanks a lot for watching. Um, please support what we're doing. We have a lot of passionate scientists that are on board to share their knowledge and insights and their, their stories of how they got to where they are and how to succeed in this field and why it's so important, why science is so important. Uh, you can help us tremendously for free by sharing these videos, subscribing, and getting the word out. You can also help us not for free by chipping in a dollar or two on our Patreon account. So please support us. We'll continue to produce these videos. We do this for free. We do this because we care. So we're happy that you're watching. Thank you.